Council Bill 17-0065, Ordinance of Estimates for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018. There are copies of the schedule for today's budget hearing uh, on the ledge in the back. Um, feel free to help yourselves. I'm joined today uh, to my direct left by Vice Chair of the Committee, Councilman Leon Pinkett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, from the 7th District. To his left, Councilman Robert Stokes from the 12th District. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to the far right, uh, Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton, Vice President uh, from the 6th District. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Councilman Ryan Dorsey from the 3rd District. Uh, directly to my right is Marguerite Curran, staff to the committee. And anyone from the Mayor's Office? I think they'll be joining us shortly. So first up, we have Department of Finance, uh, Director Raymond, you could take it away. Um, ask that you do a, um, keep your briefing 15, 20 minutes, and uh, if you could introduce your team, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, Honorable Members of the Committee. I'm Henry Raymond and I serve as uh, Director of Finance for the City. Uh, joining me this morning is uh, <clears throat> the Deputy Director of Finance, Steve Krauss. To his right, the Bureau Chief for uh, Risk Management, Doug Kerr. On the back row, uh, to my immediate right, uh, representing uh, fiscal integrity, excuse me, fiscal integrity and recovery, Ms. Johanna Collada. To her right, the Bureau Chief for Accounting and Payroll Services, Sandy Stecker. To her right, the Bureau Chief for Revenue Collection, Janice Simmons. And to her right, the Bureau Chief for Treasury Management, <coughs> Janelle Rogers. To my immediate left, Andrew Klein, Budget Director. So we'll begin the presentation. The mission of the finance department is to provide excellent customer service to the citizens and our fellow agencies. We provi provide a full range of financial services to city agencies. We collect and invest all monies due to the city, manage all debt, and develop and execute sound fiscal management practices and policies. This is the organizational chart for uh, the department. It's, it essentially consists of six major bureaus and one office. Again, the bureaus are accounting and payroll services, budget and management research, purchases, revenue collection, risk management, treasury, and the fiscal integrity and recovery office. What I'd like to state at the outset is that for the finance department, we have decreased the number of positions for fiscal 18 from 301 positions to 297 positions, so that's a net reduction of four positions. The general fund overall uh, recommended a reduction of 54 positions citywide. The finance department is contributing almost 10% of that with the four positions. Uh, the, fi the finance department recommended budget for fiscal 18 is an austere budget. It's a $1 million increase from 33.8 million to 34.8 million. Uh, while it is austere, this will allow us to maintain our current level of service across all bureaus. Now, we'll move into uh, a description of the major services. The first is revenue collections, service number 148, which is general funds. The recommendation is 6.8 million. The number of positions recommended is 130 positions. Uh, essentially, this bureau collects all money that's due to the city, issues most bills on behalf of the city, and administers the tax sale process. 
we've listed a couple of uh, metrics. The first is number of calls requiring assistance. I'll turn your attention to fiscal 18, 270,000 calls we anticipate will require assistance in 18. And the collection rate on real property tax is about 97%, which is uh, in the norm of our range from uh, 96 to 98%. Moving to the next slide, Treasury and Debt Management. The recommendation for 18 is a million 87,000, all general funds. This bureau has nine positions that remains unchanged from 17. Treasury essentially manages the banking relationship for the city. They manage all debt. They ensure that uh, all debt schedules are met in a timely manner. They invest all cash on behalf of the city to obtain uh, optimum results in accordance with the city's investment policy. Again, we report uh, two metrics. The rate of return on short-term investments for 18, it's recommended at three-tenths of a percent. And investments on short-term uh, investments will be low because of the short-term nature. And also, uh, interest rate on bonds issued, we're projecting uh, rates of, of approximately 4.25% we're expecting uh, rising interest rates in fiscal 18. Moving to the next slide, administration. This essentially is uh, the director's office. The recommendation is 1.5 million. For fiscal 18, there will be 12 positions in the director's office. Two positions have been transferred from uh, accounting services to the director's office. These are not new positions. These are a transfer of two existing positions. And the reason for that is um, uh, when we built the 17 budget, we, I made the decision that grants management would be in accounting. I've since uh, made the decision that grants management will be administered out of the director's office. So we moved the two created positions from accounting to the director's office. Essentially, the director's office provides uh, executive direction and control across the finance department and provides uh, uh, guidance to all city agencies as it relates to uh, budget, fiscal, investment, procurement, uh, et cetera, to all agencies. Procurement, this is a general fund unit. Uh, there's 34 positions in procurement. Uh, th this bureau provides uh, all purchasing services to uh, agencies to ensure that we obtain commodities, goods, and services at the, uh, the best possible cost through competition. As you can see, we've listed two metrics. One is the number of vendors, vendors registered in city by for, eight, for fiscal 18. The goal is to re have 18,000 vendors registered and the number of bids per formal solicitation is four the more bids that we can get hopefully uh there's more competition and we get better prices <clears throat> surplus property disposal is a special fund 145,000. this supports two positions the function of this unit is to dispose of surplus property from the agencies, whether they be vehicles, electronic equipment, recyclable materials, et cetera. The output measure for this is for fiscal 18 is that there will be 35 auctions. And the revenue generated is estimated to be approximately $450,000.
printing services. This is an internal service fund. Recommendation is 3.4 million. There are, excuse me, 14 budgeted positions in this service. And essentially, this service provides document services for all agencies, whether it be digital, printing, uh, design work, et cetera. The metrics for this are the number of billable jobs. For 18, we're estimating 10,000. The increase is due to the fact that uh, the city has now moved to monthly water billing. And in terms of the percentage of cost recovery, the goal is 100%. As you can see, our 16 actual was 93%. So we're striving to, to be able to collect on 100% of our receivables. Accounts payable. This is a general fund unit. The recommendation is $1.1 million. There are 13 positions in this uh, service that remains unchanged from the current fiscal year. This unit processes uh, all invoices on behalf of the city. The goal is to pay all bills within 30 days. And the metrics are two, the number of invoices paid. For 18, we're estimating approximately 120,000 bills per year. And the percentage of invoices paid in 30 days, we're striving for 100%. That's always the goal to pay bills within 30 days. We have fallen short of that. And one of the initiatives we're going to take to try to address this is to provide additional training to vendors on how to properly submit uh, invoice documentation so that when their invoices are submitted, they contain all of the information necessary in order to uh, be promptly reviewed and paid and processed. Payroll is the next service. Again, it's a general fund unit. The 18 funding recommendation is 3.5 million. There are 15 positions in this uh, service that remains unchanged from the current year. Payroll processes all payroll for the city, which includes 500 weekly employees and 14,500 uh, biweekly employees and seasonal employees such as uh, youth work participants. They handle all payroll processes, the issuing of W-2s, 1099s, et cetera. And we have two metrics. One is the number of off-cycle checks. As you can see, this number has decreased each year. An off-cycle check is the result of an error. For example, uh, when the agencies submit payroll information, they may have excluded an individual or they may have reported incorrect information. We use off-cycle checks to correct those errors. So the fact that the trend is decreasing is a good sign that the error rate is coming down. Number of payroll checks issued for fiscal 18, it's 350,000. This is decreasing because of the fact that Payroll no longer processes uh, retiree checks for uh, the, the fire and police retirement system. We were able to achieve uh, savings by having F&P uh, process retiree checks. So that explains the, 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 de the decrease. Accounting, the recommendation for 18 is 1.7 million. There's a decrease of six positions in this service from 32 to 26. Accounting provides the, uh, <clears throat> provides the oversight citywide for all agencies for ensuring that all financial transactions are in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and the preparation of the CAFR. So 
all the transactions that come through are reviewed in this service to ensure that uh, they meet professional standards, they're GAP compliant, so that we don't have issues when it's time to uh, go through external audits as it relates to the CAFR or uh, financial audits related to quad audit, quadrennial agency audits. We have two performance metrics. The first is the number of transactions, journal entries for 18. We're estimating that to be about 2.6 million, which is fairly consistent with uh, our recent trends. And also the average number of days to month in close. For 18, the target is five days. Uh, this is very important because we we have to close the monthly books on time so that we can run projections, have a true understanding of what our financial position is on a monthly basis. And it's important, especially when we're doing uh, quarterly projections. The Loan and Guarantee Program is an enterprise fund. The 18 recommendation is uh, $512,000 that uh, work in the service. Essentially, this is a loan processor uh, unit that's responsible for managing uh, loans, bond issuances, and guarantees for loans uh, that were made on particular uh, projects. Uh, most of these go back over 20 years, pretty much uh, to during the uh, Schaefer administration, so it's starting to wind down. The next service is risk management. This is an internal service fund. The recommendation is 8.4 million. The number of positions recommended for 18 is 16, which is a decrease of one position from the current year. This unit, uh, handles all of the insurance policies for the city, uh, administers workers' compensation for the city, uh, tries to develop best practices for uh, worker safety across city government. Uh, they do lots of inspections based on uh, regulatory compliance, whether it's like vehicle fumes, things of that nature, things to make our uh, workplace safer to reduce risk and by reducing risk that'll generate savings. Uh, we have two outputs. First is the number of random drug and alcohol tests for 18. The, the target is uh, 3,500 annually. And the second metric is claims cost per employee. For 18, it's the average is $2,715. Uh, we track this so that we have a very good idea of what types of claims are we experiencing, the magnitude of those claims, the claims by agency, average cost per agency, and then we extrapolate that uh, citywide. Operating budget and management, uh, Most of you know that more as uh, BBMR, Bureau of Budget Management Research. Uh, the 18 recommendation is $2 million. The number of positions for 18 is 17, which is unchanged from the current fiscal year. This service provides management and oversight of the city's $2.8 billion operating budget. They work with the agencies to prepare uh, annual uh, budgets. They've implemented uh, many innovative processes to try to ensure that taxpayers' resources are used as wisely as possible. They also review uh, legislation and provide uh, revenue estimates for the city as a whole. They also prepare uh, quarterly projections, year-end projections, and they manage uh, all of the city's budget da budgetary data. 
the two measures that you see displayed. The first is the average number of days to approve requisitions. This is from all agencies. So for fiscal 18, uh, the target is two. In fiscal 16, uh, we were able to meet the same target, two as an actual. So we're doing pretty good with the turnaround time on uh, paperwork requisitions. Revenue forecast and accuracy. For fiscal 18, the target is uh, 2% to have no more than a 2% variance from the original projection. <clears throat> this service is fiscal integrity and recovery. It's a general fund unit. The recommendation is 1.1 million. There are six positions in this service, which is unchanged from the current year. This unit was originally established in 2011 to ferret out uh, fraud and particularly fraudulent tax credits, uh, whether it be uh, homestead credits, uh, CHAP credits, any type of credits that were uh, fraudul fraudulently obtained. And this unit has uh, probably since 11, to fiscal 2011, has saved the city over $30 million uh, through their efforts. There are two metrics listed. The first is the number of appraisals completed. For fiscal 18, the, the target is 700. Having appraisals done uh, can save the city money if we determine that properties are uh, underassessed. And then the second is increased dollars in property tax revenue attributable to successful appeals. Uh, we appeal properties through SDAT when we determine that properties are underassessed, and we determine this from uh, using a variety of analytical tools. And where we determine that underassessments have occurred, uh, we take steps to appeal. If we're successful with the appeals, the assessments increase. That generates additional uh, real property tax revenue. Finance project management, and this is uh, the last service. This is a unit that works within the finance department and project management for implementation of all new uh, business systems. For example, uh, two years ago, we migrated personal property tax system off the mainframe to a new system. Uh, we have plans now for hotel tax, parking tax, and real property taxes. There are two metrics listed. The first, number of functional design documents completed. Two, these are essentially business requirements where we uh, list out all of the requirements for each business application. Uh, do work process flow charting to determine uh, what the requirements of the application are so that when we review vendor submissions, we can e quickly sum up whether those products meet our requirements. The functional design documents uh, are prepared with the assistance of the using agencies. And then the second target is the number of software packages identified that meet 80% of the user requirements. The goal is that based on the functional design documents that have been prepared, when we look at products, even if it's an off-the-shelf product, it has to at least meet 80% of our requirements. If our position is if it meets less than 80% of the requirements, those products would probably require significant modification, and we don't want to modify off-the-shelf software 
because uh, that has a, a host of issues in terms of being able to do upgrades in a timely manner, et cetera. So essentially that sums up the, uh, the overview for the finance department for uh, the various services. Thank you, Director. We've been joined by Councilwoman Shannon Sneed from the 13th District, uh, Council President Jack Young, Councilman Brandon Scott from the 2nd District, Councilman Chris Burnett from the 8th District, uh, Kara Kuntz, Legislative Director for Council President Young, as well as Karan Banks from the Mayor's Office. Um, before we get into questions, uh, I would ask that just because of the number of council members that are here, uh, that we do our very best to limit it to two questions per member. Um, and if you have uh, additional questions um, that we can circle back uh, and catch those on the back end. Uh, first up, Councilman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Raymond, as always, thank you for your service, sir. I just have a question about uh, service 703 and that's payroll. So can you tell me, Mr. Raymond, how much we actually spend uh, in the fiscal year to have our, our payroll company print out actual copies of checks and stubs and forms for, this, for the city? Yeah, I don't have that with me, but we'll provide that. And how much would, it, how much would the city uh, save if we chose to go strictly paperless uh, with, with that system? Because I know that's, that's available. It seems to me that we're wasting a lot of taxpayer dollars by actually printing out stubs. I know that if you go in my office, you'll just see a stack of them. Because if they're available online, I'm never going to actually look at the stub. It seems to me we could save a lot of money if we just switched over. Mm -hmm. And then my, my second question is, is, is similar. Sim is similar. And when we go to service 710, uh, the, the re fiscal integrity and recovery, can you also provide the exact exact amount of how much the, the unit has recovered for the city and how they did that and since we created it in 2011? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go back to payroll. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the issues with payroll and moving to uh, paperless we have lots of employees that uh, do not have access to uh, computers. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, share that with you because we have lots of employees in carrying out their daily duties do not have access to uh, electronic media for that and don't have uh, computers at home, but we will provide that information. I, I would say that you'd be very hard pressed to find a city employee who doesn't have a smartphone with the capability to, to look at their paycheck. Uh, a lot of our city employees happen to follow me, follow me on social media, many of which are, are some of our lowest paid employees who I know don't have computers at home, but they have social media accounts. But even still, I think that even if we looked at it by just those if who optionally want to, to receive a hard copy or not, that we would save a lot of money. And then for for uh, service 710, can you provide, do you know offhand or can you provide for us how much the unit has actually saved this, the taxpayers and in every instance the amount and what, how they were able to do that? Were they right. discovering fraud and what in particular service or can you, do you have those numbers with you? Not today, but we can provide that. A, a large portion of it was with the homestead. Correct? Tax credit. Thank you. Mr. Raymond, I, I had a couple questions. Um, Service number 148 with revenue collection. Yes. Um, one of the items ha says contractual services and it says 3.6 million. Can you, can you tell us, you know, what does that contractual service include? Yeah, the, the contractual services includes uh, different types of uh, outside support that we require, mm -hmm. such as uh, information technology support to, su to, to support our systems. Uh, it includes things like uh, security uh, trucks that pick up okay. cash on a daily basis, uh, cash trucks that uh, pick up our parking meter coinage. Uh, it includes, uh, for example, the contract that we have uh, for our parking collections vendor. So it 
represents uh, various outside uh, organizations that provide support to the Bureau. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just look, I, I just wanted to mm -hmm. kind of see if there were anything that can be done in-house that was a part of that, that, that contractual service um, line item. Um, my, my other, another question I had was related to the administration, and you said that you brought over two positions in a grant management role. Can you, can you tell us about those positions and what, I guess, the, the number of dollars and grants that, is, that, that are a result of having those positions? Yes. Okay, so the issue that we're talking about is grants, federal grants management. Mm -hmm. The city has uh, a grants deficit of approximately $80 million that is built up cumulatively uh, over the last 20 years or so. This grants deficit is having a, a negative impact on the city in being able to issue its uh, annual, comprehensive annual financial report in a timely manner. So we have to address this issue. So what we did in fiscal 17, we created several positions to address this issue. When those positions were created, they were assigned to the accounting department, BAPS, Bureau of Accounting and Payroll Services. Because this grants management issue is so large, and the fact that BAPS has had extensive challenges in issuing the CAFR in a timely manner, I made the decision to transfer the grants management function to the office of the finance director. So these two positions that have been transferred are not new positions, they're existing positions. And what the purpose of these two positions are, they're accountant two positions. These positions are reviewing the city's uh, general ledger as it relates to the federal grants. This is across all agencies uh, to determine what grants should be closed. Do the revenues match the expenditures? Uh, moving the expenditures to where the revenue is, moving the revenue to where the expenditures are, essentially cleaning up thousands of ledger accounts mm -hmm. that have been cl that should be closed so these accountants are doing a lot of cleanup work so that we can determine the true extent of the general fund liability as it relates to these grant expenditures okay so that's what they're doing and i would say on average each of those individuals probably including fringe benefits is maybe 75, 80,000. Okay. So th these are not expensive positions. And, and just real quick, one other thing, uh, um, under service number 700, um, surplus property disposal, yes. I think you mentioned um, $450,000. Is um, the estimated yield right. for fiscal 18 for auctions, whether it be uh, vehicles, electronic devices, it could be computers, things of that nature, recyclable materials. We even auction off uh, wooden pallets mm -hmm. that w the city receives when uh, we take possession of, you know, stuff that requires to be uh, delivered on pallets. So mm -hmm. we, we try to sell everything that we can. Now, th it seemed like a low number. I mean, I, I don't have any right. ref it, it, point it, of reference, it but it's- It fluctuates uh -huh. because we don't have a way of looking in, in the future to know that in a particular year we're going to have a lot of electronic okay. equipment to dispose of or a lot of vehicles. It, it just depends. Okay. Um, Councilman Burnett. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I just had a quick question. Uh, service 710. Uh, it was really quick. The, one of the performance measures listed, uh, number of tax applications rejected or revoked. Uh, it looks like it's a metric you started in FY15, uh, and but I was just wondering about the outlier of 655 in FY16 rejected or revoked, uh, which seemed way out of your, both your projections and the previous year. Uh, at least that's what I have on page 129 in the budget book. Okay, I'm on 129. <clears throat> so which metric? 
uh, number of tax applications rejected or revoked in the fiscal year 16 and actual was 655 when you're the target it was a new metric but then the target the following year was 30 to 35 was there a change in the service or why is that such an outlier compared to the previous fiscal year oh. in 16 uh, we did a lot of cleanup work so we think that we've uh, caught the, the overwhelming majority of it and that's why the numbers coming down and that's why it's a it was a new measure so we did a lot of cleanup work uh, so we're not based on the cleanup work we don't believe that there's that much more to catch now uh, can you can you explain a little bit more on the cleanup the kind of cleanup you were looking at were these folks ineligible for the program or I think the, I think, you're referring to, I think you're referring to all applications that we had uh, for CHAP. Mm -hmm. So those were uh, property owners that had applied a long time ago for the CHAP and never completed the renovation. So we did an effort to clean up all those applications uh, since there, now there is a time frame to complete your renovation. So we, sent, we did that uh, clean up and that's why it was so big and now we don't have that many more because it hasn't been done since 1998 when the credit began. Uh, thank you. Council President Young. Thank you. Um, on se service 708 in the uh, budget management book on page 126, this service performance measures table has the same flaw a number of the finance department's performance measure table have the FY16 target as provided to this council in the budget book have changed to match the F16 actual numbers. This is especially obvious here where the fiscal 16 target, um, which has 2% in the FY16 budget book is now 5.69%, uh, same as the actual revenue forecast accuracy. The city council has to rely on this information provided to be accurate so we can exercise our legislative oversight duties and pass this budget. What is going on with these numbers? Okay, this is one number, uh, President Young, you're referring to the fiscal 16 target where it's listed as 5.69%. Uh, yes. That's an error. I take full responsibility for it. The correct number is uh, 2%. So I corrected that error uh, in the, uh, the slide. Okay, in the performance measure table on the same page, there is a blank for FY16 actual recommended dollars saved for management research project. Why is, why is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, uh, there, we, had, we had two management research projects for fiscal year 16, they were not focused on, um, the recommendations were not focused on cost savings, so there were no cost savings recommended in the f fiscal 16. That's why that, that's so representing that's a, blank. a zero. Yeah. Okay. Um, page 148. No, page um, 93, I'm sorry. Okay. What? Page, page 93 and the um, volume one. On page 93, the performance measures table for revenue collection list costs for payment trans transaction. Can you explain what is meant by cost per transaction and how 90 cents per trans transaction compares to other similarly sized government revenue collection costs? <clears throat> yeah, essentially, this is our estimate of how much does it cost to process a payment transaction. So it's made up of how much does it cost for uh, people to pay their bills online using credit card or debit card and how much does it cost for people to uh, walk into the Able Woman building to uh, make a payment transaction? So there's a difference between um, walking in and doing the um, 
Online. Excuse me. Online. And doing the um, online? Yes, sir. What cost it, would it be for online? Well, the, the cost is significantly less for online because it doesn't require it, it doesn't require uh, human interaction with staff as it does when you go to the Able Woman building. So the on so that's why we always encourage people to make their payments online because it, it costs less than interaction with a clerk over at the Able Woman building. Okay. Um, on page ninety seven in the same book. Mm -hmm. The the performance measures chart on um, on page I'm sorry page 96 lists the rate of return for short term investment at around 0.3 percent. Can you provide the city council with information about how this compare to similar size city short term investment returns? We would actually have to um, gather that information and send it to you. Mr. Mr. President, um, yeah, Mr. President, regarding our, our investments of our, of our portfolio, majority of that cash is, is, is excess revenue over expenses that the city might, might incur during a particular day. And what Treasury does is they take those excess balances and they invest them out for a yield uh, that we can get uh, in, in the open market, whether it be treasuries or agency type, type investments. Most of that cash flow is needed at various times during the year. And what we do when we have a big expenditure that may be two months out, we'll take a, say, $5 million surplus we earn today and invest it 60 days and have it ready for that uh, disbursement when it becomes due, and as I said, about 60 days out. What that means, though, is that all these investments are very short term. And when you have a very short-term type investment, the, the, the rate of return is going to be very small. I'm sure everyone here has a bank account or a savings account. You know right now interest rates are very, very low. And that's why our investment return is below 1%. As we showed here, I think it's about 0.3. Um, and that is what the market is. And that is what the, the city uh, earns on its return. We, we would like to see that higher. But in this current interest rate environment, that's about all we're going to be able to get. Um, so we can... We do have uh, benchmarks that we put that towards. We, we look at the, the, the six and 12 month treasury. And uh, in the case of the six month treasury, we do exceed that, that benchmark. Um, but it's just the nature that, that all of our investments are short term because we need that cash on a short term basis. Okay, well this one of the questions that we're gonna um, ask you all to provide us with the information as compared to some of the cities. Yes, if you'd like, we, we, can, we can show you how that benchmark uh, measures towards its six-month treasury. Would that, would that be adequate, sir? Yeah, that'd be accurate. Okay, very good. Um, Mr. Chair, if I can go um, one more question. Um, service 710. I think that's page 129. Um, this service performance measures table um, suffers from the same problem that exists in the performance measure table for payroll, operating budget, and several other finance tables. This table has changed or hidden the fiscal year 2016 target. The fiscal um, 16 target for the outcome label increase in property tax revenue <coughs> attributes to successful appeals was 2.5 million. There was even a target for 2015, which was 2 million. For some reason, this table says the measure was new in 2016 and lists the actual outcome as 1.78 million. This information is incredible, important to not just our fiscal integrity, but also to our ability as a city to accurately convey our performance to the public. What is going on with these numbers? And if the finance department is consistently underperforming, let's figure out how to get this work done right and capture these lost property tax revenues. We'll, we'll respond in writing to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, before we go on to the next one, I just want to summarize what we've asked for so far. And um, the first one is from Councilman Scott, uh, Service 703 Payroll. 
um, what is the difference in cost between printing it out and, and going paperless? Councilman, did I get that right? C Councilman Scott, did you get that right? Scott. Scott. How, how much does it, uh, Service 703 payroll, how much does it cost to print out versus going paperless? Yeah, yes. Uh, I, we want to see how much it would cost, how much the city would save if we went totally paperless or if we went paper uh, to an option that people can choose to have one or not, both. Okay, that's request number one. Um, what was that, Councilman Dorsey? I was just going to add that that should include not only payroll but also the water billing that was mentioned. Okay. And not just the cost for printing but also the labor to put it in envelopes and the postage and everything that goes that's involved in all that. Got it. So that's request number one. Request number two was from Councilman Scott, service 710. Um, how much uh, has each uh, unit recovered uh, for the city since 2011? And if you can break that down, how that was collected, is that correct, Councilman? Yes, sir. I want to know how much the unit has recovered and what services they recovered and from any amounts for each time they recover money. Got it. Um, Karan, we're going to send requests three th through six, which were from Council President Young, which he just discussed in writing so that you guys have that. Um, sorry for the pause. Uh, Councilman Stokes. Mr. Raymond, um, can you tell us more about this kind of like a three part um, question? Can you tell us more about the payment process? The what? The payment process and the other part and help us understand why in 2016 the effectiveness rate was only 64 percent and the last part it is it a complicated system for vendors okay, okay so essentially the way the uh, payment process works is vendors are directed to submit their invoices to accounts payable electronically. We have a uh, email address box. At the same time, agencies are doing uh, a three-way match between uh, requisition purchase order and invoice. As I indicated earlier, part of the delay is we believe that vendors need more training on how to properly submit invoices so that we can meet the 30-day uh, payment period. So what happens is accounts payable is reviewing the invoices. The agencies are reviewing the invoices in order to ensure that the services, commodities, or goods were received, that the three-way match occurs, and that the invoice documentation from the vendor has been properly submitted. Now, as you can see, we paid 64% of the, the bills within 30 days. I believe that part of this is a work volume issue because if you look at all the numbers, as we pay more invoices each year, the percentage of invoices paid on time decreases. I believe that the majority of this is due to vendors not being able to understand what the requirements are. So as I indicated, we're going to do more outreach and training with the vendors so that vendors know exactly what's required so that we can pay them on time. Real quick, can so you? I answer two of the three. Okay, well, before you go any further, can you give us the data on the vendor's errors on the application or actually the city's error also? I know uh, offhand, one of the, the big items is uh, vendors uh, have not, vendors do not in a timely manner complete the, uh, the W-9. We have to have a W-9 on file for the vendor to be paid. And we go through a lot of hassle just getting uh, them to complete that and submit that because we can't cut the check without the W-9 on file. Um, again, the other things would just be uh, incomplete invoice information when the invoices are submitted. Uh, it could be things like it doesn't properly reference the commodities, the services, or the goods. So, for example, the purchase order might, I'm just making this up, 
we were buying 100 pounds of rocks. They submit an invoice for 110 pounds. So the, the quantity doesn't match what the purchase order was, or the unit price doesn't match what the purchase order was. So for some reason, it's, it's off. All of that has to be reconciled before uh, a check can be issued. So that, that's a, a lot of what it is. It's that the unit cost or the quantity does not match the, uh, the, the purchase order. Okay, is it a complicated system? Vendors, because it's... No, no. Uh, I just think that a lot of the vendors have varying degrees of sophistication. Some can handle the paperwork better than others, and some of it is, is it's the vendor record keeping. If you have a purchase order for 100 pounds of rocks, why are you submitting an invoice that says 110 when it's for 100? That requires phone calls, follow-up, back and forth. That delays uh, invoice payment. Okay, Mr. Chairman, can we, for a request, request the data to show the city's error and the vendor's error on um, this process? So, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I say, can we request on, on your sheet about getting the data from Mr. Henry on showing where the city error or the vendor's error on the um, payment process? He said he had the data for that? Yeah, we, we can provide uh, examples of the, the types of issues that I've just described. You know, whether it's unit cost, quantity, the, the types of deficiencies that we see with the invoices when they're submitted. So request number seven, um, Quran, is just going to be a, a narrative description of the errors that Director Raymond um, just discussed with Councilman Stokes. Yeah. Good? Thank you. Um, we've been joined by Councilman John Bullock from the 9th District and Councilman Bill Henry from the 4th District. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, hello, thanks for being here today. Um, in an effort to fulfill the mission of the Department of Finance to provide a full range of financial services to city agencies and develop and execute sound fiscal policies and practice, um, my questions, uh, my first question is about, uh, you had a slide about procurement. Um, different city agencies, particularly DOT, re rely on the use of outside contractors to perform not only in-field work for road resurfacing and such, but even um, for designs to modify roads and uh, public space, um, DGS as well. Uh, I recently had a, uh, there's a senior center in my district that needs work and it's the number one priority for the health department in their capital uh, interests. Um, and they can't move forward because DGS has said that uh, they'll need to do an assessment of the needs of the building and that this will require hiring an outside contractor that will cost somewhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars just to assess that that sounds to me like one person's salary for a year nearly uh, not one contract that we should be issuing is the Department of Finance in the habit of uh, assessing these kind of practices of using outside contractors for things that we could just as well be performing in-house, particularly for design work um, and, and uh, assessments of city property? Yeah, Councilman Dorsey, uh, let's go back to the agencies that you just referenced, for example. Sure. Department of General Services, mm -hmm. Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. and Department of Public Works. They have delegated authority for handling their own procurements for design work and construction work. What purchases is responsible for are things like commodities, goods, and supplies. So the, the question that you're referencing, like where DGS has said to an agency, we need to 
award an outside contract to look at a, whether it's a feasibility study, design work, et cetera. That is not under the purview of the finance department because those D, DPW, DGS, DOT, they have delegated authority for construction contracts. So there's a, a whole separate process where those agencies go to the Board of Estimates directly without purchases involvement because purchases is not involved in construction contracts. Now, for the, the, uh, the type of transactions we get involved with, yes, we would look to see if there's a, a better, less expensive way of obtaining the good or service. But to your specific question, DGS, DPW, and DOT have delegated authority for construction work. So just to be clear, my question, I guess in a more general sense, is in aiding agencies in developing fiscally sound policies and practices and providing a full range of financial services to them, does the Department of Finance do any level of overview of the costs uh, and benefits versus, you know, of using outside contractors versus having inside employees to the, do the these answer things. The answer is yes. But because not only are we preparing the operating budget, we're preparing recommendations for the capital budget. The capital budget is what supports construction work. So the answer is yes. And that's done in consultation with the planning department and the planning commission. So how is it that we are still routinely giving out these very large contracts for studies and assessments and design work um, for individually more than it would cost to have an employee to do these things in these agencies? I, I would like to know what your assessments look like. If, we could, if I could make that request, uh, what your assessments look like uh, as a comparison between using outside contractors for various uh, studies and design work versus to hire individual employees uh, to do that work in-house. Okay. It, uh, is that request registered? I just want to, we cool. Yeah. Yes. That's number eight. And I, I do have one other question. Councilman, what, what's uh, the director's assessment of in-house? A comparative assessment of between in-house versus outside contractors used for design and studies and other such um, work it. within different various city agencies, DOT, DGS in right. particular. Um, on, that's number eight. So in summary, the, the answer to that is yes, we, we do take that into consideration as, a, as part of operating and capital budget development. Okay. And we'll provide information. Thank you. And um, I had a property in my district recently that we found to be listed as a church and not paying taxes since 2007, despite the fact that they have five dwelling units on premise and have never had a use and occupancy permit for the church, so it could not legally be used as a church at any point. Um, so the city has lost significant um, tax revenue on that property um, uh, and so I'm wondering I know that you purged the roles of a bunch of stuff having to do with CHAP that was already discussed on page 129 um, is the Department of Finance per performing oversight um, and does it get involved um, in other sorts of tax issues like this that are potentially fraud? Uh, yes, we do. And I'd like to get the address of the property that you referenced. Okay. Because 4708 Harford Road. I'm sorry. 4708 Harford Road. Uh, because we can address that. Um, that. That's my two questions, I guess. I did have just one real quick one, though. Uh, just about tracking um, progress. I'd like to know how we're um, able to follow 
cases where vehicles are damaging city property, knocking over bollards, uh, how much damage is being caused, um, the cost to fix that stuff, and uh, our success rate in collecting the, that money to, re, you know, to make these repairs, and if that money is actually making its way back into the agencies. So I'd like to know how we track that, how, our, how successful we are. I we, see a lot do, of damage to city property. Yeah, we do track uh, vehicle accident information through our Bureau of Risk Management, and we do compile that information in terms of uh, the nature of the accidents, who's responsible, and the recovery. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the extra question. Thank you, Councilman. And I'm just going to ask that um, any individual district issues, kind of like with, with that specific address that you brought up, that we're not going to make those part of the, this official list. And if the respective council member will follow up with, with yeah, the absolutely. agency official. Thank you. Um, we've been joined by Councilman Yitzi Schleifer from the 5th District. Um, Director, I have a quick question about um, homestead tax credit abuse and um, you know, our efforts uh, to address that. I know um, Bill Voorhees had been working on that for, for some time along with Tom Waugh. If you could talk about just the status of those efforts and what we've been able to recover, uh, you know, over the last year or two, and give us an update on that, please. Okay, yeah, I don't have uh, the recovery information <laughs> with me. We can provide the last couple of years, but essentially uh, what we do is, okay, so the Homestead credit is a state credit. Homeowners have to apply by application to receive the credit. The number of homestead credits has decreased significantly in the city since SDAT went to the policy of uh, the, the, at the time, the annual application because they had the resources to match up address, social security number, to see if somebody was claiming homestead credit on multiple addresses, whether it be in the city or in the city and outside the city. We get many complaints from homeowners that ask us to investigate that they believe a property adjacent to them across the street, et cetera, uh, that someone may be uh, fraudulently receiving the homestead credit we investigate those, we forward them to SDAT for re removal where warranted. Uh, we do this consistently whenever we receive complaints. Internally, uh, we use tools through MOIT to try to determine if someone is receiving the homeowner credit and they're uh, not entitled to it. When we discover that, uh, we remove the credit, notify SDAT to change the records, and then <coughs> to the extent that we can legally, we go after the homeowner that was fraudulently or incorrectly receiving the credit. And what we do is we go after current year plus the three prior years. So we call that the clawback. Do, do we have enough, um, or, or is the office that handles that, Tom's unit, is that adequately staffed in your opinion? Or do you think it needs more resources? And if it does, um, what, what's the trade-off in terms of for every inspector or analyst that we bring on that's investigating this, what are they bringing back in revenue to the city? So part of that is uh, under the uh, performance audit for quad audit for, for that unit that has started. Um, I believe that uh, the unit is properly staffed. It's been staffed at between six and seven members since the creation. Um, I think that we have a very good handle on uh, fraudulent activity. It was primarily through, uh, as a result of the Homestead Credit, that's largely under control now because of the, the application process and SDAT, uh, SDAT's involvement. Our attention has turned to other credits. Uh, I think we have a pretty good handle on that with the implementation of an automated tax credit system. What used to require a lot of manual intervention and 
hands-on with staff is now being done uh, uh, automatively through the uh, the application, the tax credit applications that we have. That relates to submission of the applications, review of the applications, the manual, the uh, manual calculations of the credits themselves, the documentation to support what that credit should be. So uh, I believe that the, uh, the unit is appropriately staffed and funded and uh, will provide, because uh, I think that was requested earlier, by categories of what the savings have been. Thank you. Um, and the last piece of that is, have we considered um, outsourcing that or contracting um, that type of investigation service out to a firm that uh, handles that for other municipalities and my thought there is that um, if we're able to if for some reason we didn't have the bandwidth in-house to do that um, there could be revenue that's left on the table that the city's not collecting so has there been any thought into that or discussion right. about uh, we don't think that we're leaving uh, money on the table because we believe that we are uh, properly staffed if we were not staffed, we would consider it because we would not want to uh, allow fraudulent activity to, to go unchecked. Got it. Um, so, Karan, I, I guess request number nine is just a summary of um, uh, revenue that's been collected as a result of fraudulent activity across both the Homestead Tax Credit and any other credit programs. Councilman Pinkett. Mr. Henry, um, in uh, Service 708, um, it mentions manage management research projects um, for the purpose of producing budgetary savings. Can you tell us what's the management research for this year? Because it, it sometimes it says that some of those studies don't necessarily yield a savings. Is the one this year intended to, I mean, I, I guess it is because it, it's, it's saying that, the, you know, the target is $2 million, but so what, what, what are we studying? I'll let the Bureau Chief uh, respond. Sure. Councilman, we, we work with the Mayor's Office to develop a management research agenda mm -hmm. each year, so we're, we're in that process now um, for fiscal 18, so I don't have the specific projects yet, um, but, you know, generally speaking, you know, when we do a management research project, it, it, it's a combination of um, maybe an organizational issue, um, could be a, a cost analysis. Um, so there's a combination of oftentimes um, there'll be cost saving recommendations, not always. Like in fiscal 16, you know, we had projects that um, did not result in those kinds of recommendations. But um, right now I, I don't have the, management research agenda we can we'll share that as soon as we we have that so, I mean and, and I and I appreciate that but it seems kind of silly to put a target there if you, you don't know the research you, you don't even know if the study is going to be intended to yield um, a savings right I mean but, I, can, but, but will, I, I can tell you what one that's on the table that has been discussed a lot is mm -hmm. is mowing uh -huh. you know how you know we have five different agencies that do mowing of various types, and there's been an interest for a long time in looking at how do we rationalize that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's on that's you know on the list of things we're talking about, mm -hmm. and I think that's one that that could possibly lead to efficiency and savings as a as a result. Um, so I, you know, I understand I understand your your question. Right. Um, you know we're we're being ambitious. I mean our goal is to generate savings through our through our studies, um, it, generally speaking, and so that's why we that's why we went ahead and set a target for for ourselves. And I'm, and I'm sorry, you, you may have said it. So when when should we expect to hear you know what you know what the determination of that study is, or so, or studies? Yeah, you, you mean just the agenda of what yeah. we're going to be studying? Mm -hmm. uh, we should we should be able to get that to you before the fiscal year begins. Okay. Um, j just one other question um, related to payroll service 703. Um, oh, and, and Councilman, I would say um, happy to receive uh, suggestions from the council. Okay, we appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Mr. Raymond, yes. 703, uh, 
think you mentioned that um, some of the, a percentage of the number of payroll checks issued is now going to be handled by um, F and P or <coughs> something, something like that. Yes. W was there any decrease in number of positions related to the, now you know that significant part of um, payroll checks now being done by some other entity? No. Part of the reason we did this, so again, to summarize, what, and this was approved by uh, the city council because it required legislation. Mm -hmm. Payroll services previously uh, issued checks for all active employees and all, retire, all retirees, whether it be fire and police, employees retirement system, or uh, elected officials. We determined that we could reduce our workload and save money by outsourcing to F&P the issuance of retiree checks for the F&P members. That took pressure off of payroll services because we knew that we were taxing payroll services beyond their limits and as finance director, my concern was the one thing we cannot afford to do is have a foul up on payroll. So by outsourcing uh, back to F&P the retiree checks, it reduced the workload, which allowed the current composition of staff to be more fully engaged and cover the bases on all of the other work that's assigned to them. Okay. So if we if we didn't take this measure, we probably then would have would had be, to hire more people in be, order to. I would have had to look at okay. requesting to the council additional positions. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Councilman. Can you repeat um, your request um, for the the uh, oh. agenda of re so, studies? I believe. Uh, yeah. So this one's number um, nine. Service number seven hundred eight references budgetary. Um, um, management research projects um, related to you know, possibly producing budgetary savings. And so um, w we would like to know what those proposed projects are for this fiscal year and, um, and, and in addition be able to submit possible suggestions of, of research. Um, colleagues, we just to stay on schedule, a reminder, we have parking authority coming in at 1030. Right now it's 1021. We've got two more um, uh, council members who have questions, uh, Councilman Henry and then Council President Young. Mr. Chair, um, I would put all mine in writing. Mr. Chair, yes, I will put mine in writing to expedite time. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Henry. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I, was, uh, I received a complaint from uh, an organization in my district, the Govanstown Business Association, uh, they're one of the city's uh, retail business district license uh, associations. We sent out um, bills to the businesses back in December of 16, telling them that they had to pay the retail business district license fee by January 1 of this year. Um, the Govantown Business Association has not yet received their check from the city of those collected funds that the city collects and then turns around and distributes back to the association. Can you walk me through the process of what has to go on internally such that the turnaround for that is months? It's, it's generally not months. Ma'am, if, if you could use the microphone and also state your name again, no, please. Stecker. Um, it's generally not months. Generally what happens is we send the bills out, they come in, and then the next month we settle up and mail, mail the check out to the district. So I would like more information and I'll go back and investigate what's happened okay. in your situation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Councilman, if you can handle that one sure. offline just because it's a specific one. Sure. Colleagues, any other questions? Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Thank you. Um, in the same vein as uh, getting all your mowing in one place, uh, I'm wondering about the replacement of storm gra uh, stormwater grates and manhole covers. Uh, I met a DPW employee last week. 
He only does grates for stormwater at curbside and manhole covers for stormwater manholes. Apparently there is somebody else who, or a different crew, who does the exact same job, but only with sewage uh, manhole covers, and somebody else who does the exact same job with only conduit covers, and I imagine that there's somebody else, I know those for sure, I imagine that there's also somebody else who does the exact same thing for water service manhole covers. Um, I'd like to know a comparative assessment of having individual employees doing those different, different crews doing all those different jobs versus putting it in one place since they're doing the exact same job. Um, and I realize that this may be complex because it's, because it's uh, interagency with DOT having authority over the conduit and DPW for the other things, but it really does seem like this could create an efficiency. We'll follow up on that. That one's number 11. Any other questions, colleagues? Thank you. Um, Director Raymond uh, and Mr. Krause, I'd like to especially thank you guys for your responsiveness. You guys have been fantastic to work with. We're going to go into recess until 1030. It's 1024 right now. Okay, thank you very much.